the Oklahoma Sooners are getting pretty favorable news on the recruiting trail around a five-star, a safety, a linebacker, whatever you want to call him. Uh, additionally, Oklahoma, uh, they've got a big-time visitor coming on March 9th. One site has him ranked as a five-star. It's a guy that I imagine his stock is going to continue rising. So we're going to talk about that one as well. But before we dive into it, guys, I want to hear from y'all. So make sure you're joining the discussion, hitting that like button, hitting the subscribe button. Guys, I'm on the track to hit 10,000 subscribers. And I want you guys to be a part of it. So make sure you're hitting that subscribe button. Make sure you're a part of the channel here. Would love to have you be a part of it and if you haven't been with us before thank you for tuning into the pg show where we talk about all things oklahoma athletics uh, you might see some videos out there floating around with basketball baseball because that's about to start up uh we've already started softball so that's fun there and we're gonna try to get some players on to talk about that so just like football we're gonna try to cover everything else football though we got a lot of content we're pushing a lot of stuff there so you guys would love to be here where we're talking about five stars for Oklahoma. And that's where we're going to start it off is obviously with Jonah Williams because that's who I was talking about to start off the video. Uh, but Jonah Williams is a very interesting prospect, right? It's a guy that uh, a lot of sites have him labeled as a safety. I believe on three has him labeled as a linebacker. Uh, and really, when you look at Jonah Williams, he can play either one of those positions. But after the junior day that he attended, he started to receive some predictions in favor of Oklahoma. Now, if you're an OU fan, some fans are having their own thoughts on whether these predictions should have been submitted, and we'll get into that here in a second. But as you can see here, he got a prediction from Justin Wells, uh, the Texas recruiting insider. He got one from Sam Spiegelman, and for those of you who are not aware, Steve Spiegelman is national recruiting analyst for On3. Uh, he puts out a lot of crystal balls, and he's kind of like a Wilt Fong of On3. Works alongside Chad Simmons over there, does a really great job. But then, just the other day, he got the Steve Wilt Fong crystal ball. He put it in with a confidence of six. So the elite athlete, that Jonah Williams is being favored to come to Oklahoma. And that's good news, right? That, 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 that's good news. That tells you things at the visit went really well. And, and that puts a lot of confirmation in some of the things that we had heard. Uh, 6'3", 200, we're going to round down, just say 200 pounds, right? 6'3", 200 pounds. Uh, 247 has him as the number 23 overall recruit in their rankings, but he's the 14th overall player nationally. And I believe he is a five-star player across the board uh, or across the industry. So, uh, no, actually, on three's got him ranked as the number 40 player. But again, a guy that his stock's going to rise with on three, and you expect he'd probably be a five-star plus guy by the end of this cycle. So what's new with Jonah Williams? Because if you follow the OU crystal ball account on Twitter, you've seen those crystal balls. But why are fans so iffy about the crystal ball or predictions from on three that have been submitted? And the reason is you saw this tweet from Jonah and he specifically said, good thing crystal balls are just predictions with a laughing face. And there was a lot of conversations coming out of the junior day that Jonah Williams might be on the precipice of committing to Oklahoma, right? There was some belief in some circles saying that's going to happen, right? It's, it's, it's right there. And when that happens, naturally, yes, people are going to submit their predictions. The problem is it takes away from the recruit being able to actually kind of keep their commitment, you know, a secret or a surprise, you know, like some rec recruits care about that. Some recruits don't. And so it takes it away from the recruit and being able to kind of have this recruitment in their own hands. So, you know, when, when a, a lot of people submit crystal balls or predictions, they have to, you know, some like sometimes they're going to reach out to the players and ask them, Hey, is it okay? Uh, I'm going to be honest, just from the outside looking in, it doesn't feel like Jonah Williams wanted anybody to submit crystal balls in favor of him. So uh, that's interesting there to note. So I look at Jonah Williams and I say, why does Oklahoma need this athlete? Because Brandon Hall, 
has recruited really well in that safety room. And so you might ask yourself, well, I mean, yeah, he's a five-star safety, so you obviously want him, but why does he need? Well, how many 6'3 safeties do you see out there in the world? Can somebody tell me how many 6'3 safeties you see out the world? And then when you do see them, how dominant are they in that position, right? That's why you're going to want Jonah Williams. Additionally, you want him because of his athleticism, which we're going to continue to say that word because I can't underestimate how athletic this kid is. Let me just kind of dive into his um, numbers a little bit, his athleticism numbers. 5'4", 40-yard dash. 4-4 four, four on the shuttle, 11-inch vertical, 225 bench. He had 185 bench press six times, 11-5 on the 100-meter dash, a 50 on the 400-meter dash. He squats 315, deadlifts 395. Like, and then, I mean, he's a guy that plays two sports. Skip Johnson and the baseball team, they landed you Taylor Tatum in this class, where... Some people thought that was going to USC's direction, right? Oklahoma ended up closing the deal on that one because of baseball. Jonah Williams plays baseball. Skip Johnson, Brent Venables, seems like they're a recruiting duo. That's going to be pretty hard to overcome. Mind you, Brandon Hall's a pretty dang good recruiter as it sits. Why is Brandon Hall a really good recruiter? Well, to put it in perspective, Peyton Bowen. Y'all remember that recruitment? He was there. That was his that was his baby. Samuel Masigo, really good linebacker. Really excited to have him. He was the primary there. Uh, he was the secondary on Gentry Williams. He's been the primary on Jaden Nickens. He's been the primary on Robert Spears Jennings. Now, a lot of these guys are Oklahoma, right? He's done a lot of his best work here at Oklahoma. But secondary on Jaden Rowe and Jeremiah Newcomb. He was the primary on Day McCullough, who, yes, he transferred out, but Oklahoma was able to land him. Michael Boganowski, Kendall Dolby. I'm just going to continue to put some of these guys out there. Eric McCarty, Jaden Hardy. If you're Oklahoma, you see what Brandon Hall has been able to do, and you're excited because you know if he is able to go out here and land the likes of Jonah Williams, not only are you getting an elite safety and, and a talent that maybe you haven't had at that position in a long time, like Billy Bowman might be the closest thing to it that you've had in forever, but he's going to put his name at the top of boards. Like when people come up for like they need a defensive coordinator, they're going to be giving Brandon Hall a call because one, he can call a really good defense, but two, he's, starting to become known as an elite recruiter. Like, you're going to start seeing guys on the staff kind of like what you've seen in Alabama, where you start to see their names pop up in those elite recruitment conversations every single year. So I'm excited about this. And, I mean, if you had to ask, yeah, like Oklahoma's probably going to be the pick for Jonah Williams. It's probably going to drag out a little bit longer now. You're probably not going to see anything probably until the spring. Not saying Jonah Williams can't announce before then, but I would imagine, you know, spring game, that's that that would be a really good time for him to announce, right? You're gonna have a lot of people there. It's gonna be exciting. Now, the other guy that Oklahoma is in that I'm gonna say he's a five star defensive lineman because on three has him and their top 30 players in the country. And I think he's a stellar prospect. And that's going to be Trenton Wilson. And we'll dive a little bit more into his film. And I'm actually working on maybe trying to get him on when it comes to after his March 9th visit, because this is still a pretty new recruitment for Oklahoma. They offered him on January 23rd. He's been to Penn State like, gosh, what is it, six, seven times now, right? Florida State, he attended their junior day on January 27th. Oklahoma's probably going to have a lot of ground they got to make up here. The, hum the number 109th ranked player in the country. Again, a guy whose stock is going to continue to rise. But this is one, if you're an Oklahoma fan, one, you feel like we got to go out there and land this guy. Like, he's a must in this class. But two, you feel like your chances are pretty good. Because when we had a chance to catch up with Trenton after he got the OU offer, he said he started talking to the OU staff a couple weeks ago. This is when he got the offer. 
And we have already built a really good relationship. My relationship is great with Coach Bates, and I've never been to OU, but I will be there on March 9th. So obviously he was excited to get there. Todd Bates put in work. I believe the staff's already been out there to see him too. So if you're Oklahoma, although the class will be smaller than normal, or at least what you're used to, uh, the quality of players that you're going to get, and that's nothing. Please do not take this the wrong way about the other guys that we have recruited. I'm just saying the quality of players in terms of where they are ranked on the composite rankings is going to be greater in this class than probably has been in any other class because you already have 10 guys committed. And you're probably going to take another 10 to 15 dudes 15 is probably a stretch, right? But you're going to take another amount of guys in that order. And so you imagine you're going to be probably going balls to the wall for some of those five-star and high four-star prospects that in other years, you know, if you didn't land them or you weren't pressing super hard on them because you were taking another guy, like it was okay. This year, you're, you're going all in. So now, obviously... The guys like Elijah Griffin and I believe the David Sanders. If you're Oklahoma, you're not really pushing those guys, but you got some other prospects on your board. And Oklahoma might land three or four or five stars in this class. Like that's a real possibility, maybe even more. That's a real possibility. So if you're an Oklahoma fan, you're excited about the direction and trajectory of the recruiting side of the of this the <laughs> the recruiting side of the football program. Obviously, the production on the field, the development on the field, Oklahoma fans are already excited about that. You turned it around from a 6-7 and seven season to go win 10 games. Even though you lost three games and lost your bowl game, you feel really good about where the direction of the Oklahoma program is just in that side of things. So, if you haven't already, guys, make sure you hit that like and hit that subscribe button. Uh, join the discussion. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are. And uh, YouTube wants you guys to watch one of these two videos. So make sure you guys tune in there and let me know what your guys' thoughts are.